Welcome back. Well, it's Project Sunday, and I have a project for you. And as usual, it is quick, it's easy, and it's cheap. So, when we come back, we're going to take a look at the project, but also, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that this is going to be a ridiculously short video if we just stick with this project. And sort of catch you up on some other things. Okay, when we come back. Over the last few months, a lot of you have made inquiries about how my Bell's Palsy is doing. Very, very grateful for your interest and all of your good wishes because I personally believe that throwing good stuff out into the co cosmos, it's going to bring it back. So thank you for your prayers, for your thoughts, and for your words of support. So. Why don't we take a quick look at the video I made seven months ago when the Bell's Palsy first hit. This is Bell's Palsy. All right, yes, I'm hiding you. Give you a better look. The entire left side of my face is frozen. As you can see, I'm talking totally out of the right side. Let me see if I can raise my eyebrows. Right one goes up, left one, nothing. Okay. All right, sweetheart, I love you. Go away. So what's the deal with Bell's palsy? Well, Bell's palsy is the result of an inflammation of the seventh cranial nerve. Uh, that's the one that uh, moves your face around, basically. In my case, it's on the left side. It's ordinarily, it hits one side of your face. And the difference between what Bell's palsy looks like and what a stroke looks like is a stroke usually hits the lower half of your face. Bell's palsy hits the entire half of your face. And by the way, that's not supposed to give you permission to diagnose yourself or treat yourself, but just a little FYI. As you can see, massive, massive difference. I'm not 100% recovered yet, but I would say at least 90, and I'm still working on it. I'm looking for 100%, but given my age, a hundred percent was, well, it was shooting for the moon to begin with. Um, still, it's what I'm looking for. That's what I want to get to. The reason I've had such a good and consistent recovery is physical therapy. The very first call I made once I realized I had Bell's palsy was my physical therapist. My doctor was the second phone call. And that was mostly because I needed a referral to see my physical therapist. Um, the therapist that I'm seeing, uh, it's at Cardinal Miller Physical Therapy. If any of you are in the South Central Pennsylvania area, I could recommend them wholeheartedly because frankly, they have kept me walking on knees that doctors said should have been replaced eight years ago. So they're doing okay. And I think Shannon's work speaks for itself, and Shannon is the physical therapist I've worked with uh, for my face. Also, notice that middle finger perfectly straight. I went in to see them when I had a trigger finger issue, and I wasn't going to be able to have surgery because of the COVID restrictions. Physical therapy fixed it. So I'm a big believer in physical therapy to begin with. Um, most of what I deal with now, because I do a lot of walking, are sort of mechanical issues 
with my body rather than things like illness or um, other issues like that that I would see a doctor for. So my physical therapists keep me going and I love them all. Um, when I first made that video seven months ago, I had said this was a result, the result of COVID, at least I thought so at the time. I'm quite certain now. And what happened was I had been exposed to COVID. No one knew. Um, it was in the very early stages of the pandemic. It had not hit Pennsylvania. I don't think anybody had a clue in, well, actually, I'll go beyond that. I know nobody had a clue. Certainly not, you know, the person I think I got it from. No idea. I didn't even know I had COVID. Totally asymptomatic. If it hadn't been for the Bell's palsy, and then by process of elimination, eventually having the COVID antibody test, I never would have known. So, um, the comments I got were things like, COVID can't do that. What are you, crazy? Well, you know what? Seven months later, go on the internet now. The information is no longer cutting edge medical research. Now that the pandemic's been around for a while, we are seeing the, uh, the collateral damage. And that was my face. My face was collateral damage. I am doing very well. I am looking to cut back on physical therapy. I'm not going to eliminate it altogether. I still have some work to do. As you can see, I mean, it's the left side of my face. It's still not quite as active as the right side, but I'm satisfied with my rate of recovery. And I am quite certain that although my initial idea that I'm gonna be 100% in six months was a little optimistic, I think now with my revised timetable, I am going to be 100% within a year of the onset of Bell's palsy. And I know many of you have had Bell's palsy um, and some of you have not been satisfied with your recovery level. I urge you to see a physical therapist. There are probably things they can do, even if the Bell's palsy is something that, that happened many years ago. So thank you once again for all your good wishes. And this is what's going on. Now, I got a box from Lisa from Desert Dragon Works last week. And I want to show you all the goodies that were in that box. Um, she asked me not to do an unboxing. And when I realized it took me a good 45 minutes just to unpack that box, as you shall see. Uh, yeah, that was probably a good call. So what you are seeing right now is a portion of what she sent. Here you go.
amazing, huh? Just chock full of goodies. And in addition to that, there were many more items. And this is a giveaway that's going on on the Sumi's Angels Facebook page. And if you would like to participate in the giveaway, I'll make sure I leave an email address. Um, it's best if you just go to the Facebook page. That's the easiest. But if you're not a Facebook user or you can't figure out how to work it right here, I, I'm lost on Facebook. I'm going to put an email address in the, com um, in the comments. It'll be a pinned comment so that you can get in touch with them if you want to participate in the giveaway. And let me show you the giveaway pieces. This was part of that same box. <laughs> to check in with the Sumi's Angels Facebook page. And that, by the way, is being run by Colleen, Lisa, Karen, and Steffi, all very crafty creatures. And that uh, the, the Facebook page is not limited to arts and crafts. It's open to everyone. Just go on over, check in. They've got a fabulous little community over there. Um, very welcoming very supportive. Um, make yourself some new friends. All right, project now. This is our project. It was a little quickie Asian bookmark. Um, and if you've noticed on the, um, the box video, I showed two fans. And the fans were damaged. They came from Lisa. They were damaged, so they are project pieces for me. And this is what I've decided to do with them. So, as usual with our projects, I want you to take a look at the whole thing. Then I'll go over all the steps with you. And then we'll look at the whole thing after I've had a chance to explain what you saw. So, let's take a look.
up is you get yourself some fans. These are inexpensive fans. They're not celluloid. Um, actually, I think this might be celluloid. The guards are not celluloid. Um, fans have two different kinds of blades. This regular blade or stave, I've heard it called, but I'm going to call it blade. And then a heavier one that goes on either edge. And in the case of this fan, um, the heavier blades were broken. Some of the other little blades were broken. So project piece. These plastic fans can be had very inexpensively all over the place. So you get yourself a fan. You might even have a broken fan somewhere. And then the first thing you have to do is cut the rivet. Now let me grab this fan. There's a rivet that goes through right here, see right there, and it holds the blades together. And you're going to need to cut that. Usually it is very thin, flimsy metal. I cut mine with a pair of kitchen shears. You can do it with a wire cutter. You can do it with a Dremel and a cutting wheel, whatever it takes. But you need to free up your pieces. Then, next step is you have to get rid of the ribbon that connects them. In fans like these, the ribbon is glued in place. Other times, the ribbon is just, it just sits there by gravity or whatever. But with a fan like this, glued in place, so you're going to want to cut and then pick out the ribbon pieces. You can get rid of the glue by soaking the fan in warm soapy water. That will eat away the glue because the glue is water soluble. So, when you're done with that, of course, you're going to have a piece like this. Next up, you need an index card. And for this, which is a relatively small fan blade, I decided I would take my index card and cut off a two-inch strip. I would suggest a card over a piece of paper because it has to be strong enough for you to use it to wrap your thread around, but um, flimsy enough so that when you need to, you can bend it easily to release your thread. So for this, I used a heavyweight cotton sewing thread. It's not embroidery floss or anything fancy, just cotton thread. And I wrapped it around my two inch card, it's for the tassel, about 20 times. Next thing you do is you take another piece of thread and tie it off. Oh, by the way, I left both ends of my thread, both of the loose ends, I left them long because you just never know. I'd rather have them long and just snip off an inch than have them too short and, you know, screw up the tassel if I've cut it in the wrong place. So this is the part that we're making when we wrap and then you just tie it off. When you've got it tied off, leave your string long. I left only about um, maybe an inch on one side and I left it very long on the other. That's because I wanted my final knot to be down here somewhere. All right, once I have it tied off, then I wrapped it about a quarter of an inch from the top. I just ran a piece of cotton thread around maybe three or four times, tied it off, and that made a tassel for me. Then I threaded the tassel through a bead, and this is a little Audi cat bead. This was a gift from uh, Steffi's Beads and Baubles, and it's a little Audi cat. I threaded that thread through the bottom of the cat, up through the hole in my fan stave, back down through the top of the cat, and then I tied it off. And once I tied it off, I left that knot down there and I left a nice heavy knot. Then I used glue. You can use any kind of glue you want. I used E6000. I don't care. I just put a glob of it on that knot, pulled the bead down over it. So the bead, the knot, everything is held in place by the glue. So what do I have here? 
I have a bookmark. Once you get into the swing of making these, now mind you, with Audie helping and having to stop and photograph each segment and then check the photos and so on, it still took me less than half an hour to make this. So once you get into the swing of it, you can probably make a little bookmark like this for maybe five minutes time. I'm thinking it would take about five minutes of your time to make it. And of course, this is the good part. Then you can sell them. A little bookmark like this can easily sell at a halfway decent price point. I mean, two or three dollars, people are going to consider it a major bargain. And frankly, it's cost you almost nothing. And it's only cost you five minutes of your time. So with a piece like this, you can easily offer them for sale. If you have a variety of bands, uh, what I do right here, we can go with blue. This one had both black and white staves. I can do either. I chose the black because I wanted to use the little Audi cap bead. And mostly because Audie was helping in the process anyway. He was not far out of my mind. So, that is the project. There are many, many things you can do with these. Um, you can put them, and this is a super simple one. You put something like this on an ear wire. And that's especially good with the smaller fans. You can turn them into earrings. So simple. And this, see how flexible that is? You can cut off the excess end with a pair of sewing scissors. Well, no, don't use your sewing scissors. Use your kitchen scissors. Save your sewing scissors for fabric. You can easily do all kinds of things with this. They will become earrings, pendants, in this case, a bookend. But definitely give it a try. Because I'm always looking for new ways for you to find something to fill your lockdown time and make a little money in the process. So let's take a look at all the steps over again. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. That's our project. How easy is that? Um, let's see. On the way out, I'm going to show you some pictures. Um, let's let's go with um, Brown Haven again. We'll throw a little Brown Haven slideshow up for you because, as we all know, 
our little minute of serenity is getting very valuable these days. So, happy spring, and I hope to see you Thursday night for book club and Friday night, Friday morning, I'm sorry, not Friday night, Friday morning, when we are going back to the Fancy Schmancy Antique Mall, and I'm going to get to show you what I bought there at thrift store prices. All right, see you then.